Welcome to the Maternity Mentor. Today we will be talking about the pros and cons of using a pacifier with your baby. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Samantha. I've been a registered nurse since 2009, working in mother-baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum, and labor and delivery. I'm also an IBCLC. I'm maternal newborn nursing certified, and I have received training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, as well as perinatal bereavement. Many parents want to use pacifiers, but they are not sure if using a pacifier will harm their baby. Let's explore the pros and cons of pacifier use and things you need to keep in mind to use a pacifier safely. Pacifiers can be awesome helpers for weary parents, but they also come with risks attached. Therefore, almost every parent's number one question is when can I start using a pacifier? For mothers who have chosen to formula feed, you can start using a pacifier right away if your baby is latching to the bottle and feeding well. If you are breastfeeding, it is best to wait until your milk supply is well established, which is anywhere from three weeks to eight weeks after birth. That being said, the second night in the hospital can be rough when you are breastfeeding. Babies often cluster feed with very few breaks for mom. At two in the morning, it can be very tempting to offer a bottle. Some of the sucking may simply be self soothing. Therefore, during these rough situations, offering a pacifier for an hour or so means mom can get some desperately needed sleep. This is far better than offering formula in my opinion. I would not use it regularly until your milk supply is established, but as an emergency tool, I have used it successfully many times. Also, if you choose to use the pacifier in this type of scenario, it should only be used for a short time. For more information on baby's second night, please see our video on this. We will link that in the description below. One of the major pros of giving a pacifier is that studies show using a pacifier during sleep reduces the risk of sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS. The mechanism is unclear, but one theory is that pacifier use opens airways, making it easier for babies to breathe and maintain normal oxygen levels. Another pro is that pacifiers can be used to calm a baby down easily and quickly. This distraction can help stressed out parents in a pinch. Sucking on a pacifier during a flight can help ears pop, making the flight more comfortable for your baby. Pacifiers can help a baby learn to self-soothe, which is an important skill for all babies to have and can assist with better sleep for both you and your baby. Our final pro is that a pacifier can be taken away. Babies often need to suck for self-soothing. Without a pacifier, babies may turn to their fingers and thumbs to accomplish this. Fingers and thumbs cannot be taken away, which makes it a harder habit to break. Pacifiers can be thrown away. For more information on infant sleep, please see our videos on this. We will link that in the description below. There are some cons of using a pacifier that you should consider. For starters, if used improperly or too soon, pacifiers can interfere with your milk supply. If a pacifier is not needed, you should wait for three to eight weeks before beginning to use it. Pacifiers can also cause nipple confusion, causing feeding issues, including difficulty latching. Another con is that pacifiers can become a habit that is difficult to break. However, sucking on fingers and thumbs is a much more difficult habit to break. Babies can get attached to their pacifiers, causing them to be moody when they do not get it on demand. Some babies will learn to fall asleep independently using a pacifier, but others will actually have a harder time learning to fall asleep independently. Another con is that long-term use of pacifiers can cause dental problems, including misaligned teeth. This may lead to your baby needing braces later on in life. Finally, Pacifiers may increase the risk of developing ear infections. Before we continue, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe so you can get our latest content to have a happy and healthy family. Now let's talk about tips for using a pacifier. Pacifiers that are more than one piece pose a choking hazard, so be sure to get a one piece pacifier that won't come apart. You want to make sure the pacifier you, you are using is BPA free. 
Try to find a pacifier made from natural rubber or other safe materials for your baby. Pacifiers need to be cleaned properly to avoid spreading germs, which can cause infection in your baby. One such method is placing the pacifier for a few minutes in boiling sterile water. This should be done at least once per day. Believe it or not, you can also pop the pacifier in your mouth when you are on the go to clean it. This has been shown to reduce allergies in your baby. Make sure you are regularly replacing the pacifier. And finally, you definitely want to offer the pacifier to your baby during sleep. However, while awake, try to avoid using the pacifier and use other soothing strategies which can assist in reducing habit formation. In order to safely use a pacifier, there are several things you should not do. This includes never reinsert your baby's pacifier into their mouth once they have fallen asleep. Never attach the pacifier to anything including the crib, carriage, stroller, or playpen because it can strangle your baby. Short clips can be used while your baby is awake only. Pacifiers with attached decorative pieces should not be used because they have pieces that can come off and pose a choking hazard. A common practice is to dip pacifiers into a sugary substance like honey. Never do this. It can be bad for babies developing teeth and can increase habit formation. Bottle nipples are not pacifiers and should never be used as a replacement due to the choking risks. Never force the pacifier in your baby's mouth. Forcing pacifiers, fingers, or bottles into a baby's mouth can cause oral aversion and lead to feeding problems. Pacifiers should not be used if you're having any issues with breastfeeding, including nipple confusion, problems with weight gain, sore nipples, and milk supply issues. If you're experiencing recurrent yeast infections in the breast, pacifiers may be contributing to these issues and should be discontinued until the yeast infection has resolved. Finally, pacifiers should not be offered when a baby is hungry. If your baby is hungry, your baby should be fed. This is important for their growth and development. If you are breastfeeding and you skip a meal by using a pacifier, this can negatively impact your milk supply. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends discontinuing the use of pacifiers at age one. Weaning from a pacifier can be done quickly or over time. The leading factor in success is parental consistency in the method chosen. The quick way is cold turkey. All pacifiers are removed from use all at once. For babies over the age of one, a blanket or small toy might be offered for soothing. Babies under the age of one should be offered other soothing strategies such as rocking or being held by their parents. A longer method involves slowly phasing out use. Personally, when my daughter turned one, we stopped using the pacifier while awake at home or in daycare. When she turned one and a half, we stopped using the pacifier in the car, which was commonplace for our family, and limited use to nap time and bedtime only. Finally, when she was two, the pacifier fairy came and took her pacifiers away because she was a big girl. When she woke in the morning, the pacifier fairy left a small present for her. She was a little cranky for about three days, but after that she was fine. Again, consistency is key. Make sure everyone who is caring for your baby is on board and will follow the plan. Pacifier use can be beneficial for babies if used properly. I hope this has explained the pros and cons of pacifier use to help you decide whether to use one with your baby or not. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. If you like this content, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be the first to receive this information. Remember to share our channel with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at The Maternity Mentor.